Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Moline and welcome back to another Jonathan Moline's review. I mean, sorry, <coughs> interview. It's been a long time, excuse me, no pun intended. And in this one, I've always wanted to do this one, and I'm going to introduce you all to my good friend, Minty Root. Hi. Uh, and today we're going to talk about his 15-minute animation, Missing Out, which was fan-fucking-tastic. So... Minty, how long did that take you to make? <laughs> About 14 months. Uh, well, I say that because um, I was also working um, at the very end of the production of the of uh, the beginning of Harmony. I was already pre-producing Missing Out. Uh, one of the things that was one of the things I really wanted to figure out as early as possible to just be sure. Uh, you know, a hundred percent that'd be able to get it right was uh, Ponyville because one of the the um, one of the big things about the the story was that uh, the original plan was to only set it up to um, the the castle friendship, yes, the remains of the Golden Oak Library, and maybe the town hall. And I was thinking, well, I have to set those three locations right at first. And um, I was trying to uh, work on a formula. And uh, what I was originally planning to do was to do a very complex model of Ponyville and just proxy models of those locations. So you'd, get, um, you'd basically just get the, uh, the model of the Golden Oak Library that just looks fine from that angle. Uh, and basically, the idea was that I'd set a spherical camera that would project all around it and uh, basically extru extruding it with the depth. And it basically made a model of the whole area that would look fine from a uh, low angle. Well, basically, uh, you're very low on the ground, and you just turn around, and you basically feel something with some depth that would feel like the real deal. And the, or the, the overall reasoning with that was that uh, I could basically repaint it to my taste. And I wouldn't have to worry too much about the rendering until I realized at some point that it was just way too much trouble. And uh, one of the uh, one of the issues with that was that the original script was only calling for uh, you basically have the the scene where you have uh, Starlight Glimmer introducing Twilight to uh, yeah, and instead of time traveling to the past to join the main six, uh, she was threatening to, and she was about to until Twilight from her own timeline would basically tell her, no, don't do that. You don't want to screw it up. Yeah. And basically just reminding Starlight what she's done. And Starlight goes, well, this time I want to do it right. And of course it's Starlight. So she, he's, you know, she, she's uh, used to screwing, uh, screwing things up like that. And uh, there was one bit of the story that I had to cut when I realized at some point that uh, I needed a bit more scope in the story. Mm -hmm. I realized uh, there was one bit where you have uh, her talking to Twilight and she's basically asking, like, why can't I get it like you did? And she's discussing it with it. And Twilight asks Starlight, like, isn't that selfish to want to screw over the world? for your own uh, desires like that. Mm -hmm. And Starlight basically replies, is it selfish to get the to ask for the same thing everybody else gets? And Twilight doesn't really know what to respond with that because like, she's not wrong. She didn't get it. And she kind of tried to get her in a corner that was not the right one. And she realizes, yeah, you're going to get, um, you know, they're gonna screw things up, but I you can't really find it. I can't. And um, Twilight still asks her, like, do you still want to pretend to laugh at jokes? You already know the punchline. Like, it would feel really shallow. And it basically convinces Starlight to change her mind around that. And she goes back to the present days while keeping the acorn at the very, uh, uh, to get at the very end. Mm -hmm. And I realized, like, there's something, like, there, uh, you know, in the good story, you want to see a bit of consequences yeah, of what yes, uh, you're talking. I realized, like, why, why can't I really show, uh, why can't I really show what would have happened if she did that instead of just telling 
the idea is like, yeah, you screw things up, so please don't. And I was looking at that, I was thinking, well, let's change the story. Let's not have Twilight from the, the present days uh, intervene. Basically, just have Starlight be very uh, sneaky about it. And let's show a bit why it would be really shallow. And one of the things that really helped was um, uh, around the time it was, um, I was basically learning how to use Blender with EV, a new tool that we, it was uh, built. It's it basically a rendering engine that's based oh, yeah. around, well, uh, some people would say it's based around a game engine. It's not exactly that, but it's very similar. I've used Blender once. And game before. engines deliver one uh, picture every uh, uh, 30th of a second, maybe 60th of a second. And the idea that they render really fast compared to uh, rendering engines for productions, and those take hours for per frame. I was thinking, well, it's quite it's gonna be quite a game changer. Let's learn out on that. Let's support my Ponyville model that I was working on to that. And as it turns out, doing that would give me a lot uh, a lot easier time to handle it. And uh, but I had to program a tool that would basically use the basically use the camera from Toon Boom, where I basically just set the uh, 2D characters in the 3D playground, and I would need to um, use a proxy model of the whole set uh, and use the camera to basically just uh, export it to my Blender scene. So I'd have all the, the 2D animation of the characters on top of the 3D background, and I wouldn't have to worry too much about uh, rendering because I could render it separately. Yep. But I would have the same camera to just match with both. Uh, it's pretty similar to what old movies would have when uh, around the time where they had uh, Dextroflex. Um, yep. uh, Dextroflex, they created it uh, for Star Wars. Uh, I don't remember if it was the first one, but basically it's a camera controlled rig that replicates the camera movement every time. So you pre program a set of, uh, of camera movement, and that's it. And what you can do is that you can set it to, uh, more uh, one time with the same movement. And they realize at some point, well, let's do that with a camera movement or a, you know, a character in a scene, and then let's do that uh, at the same time for a smaller scale model. And since they had the same camera movement for both that was already pre-programmed, that they already remembered, they could just match it up and realize, well, I could just match up the camera movement of the scene in Toon Boom with uh, the environment that it would have. So I could basically just animate my characters like nothing happened and just uh, juxtapose oh, just layer it on top of the background. Uh, it was a bit tricky. For example, the, remember the scene of the cutie map where yes. you have Starlight just walk and the camera would. Dude, Orthally, the idea was that I would have just a shot of her, basically the or the shadow of her. Yeah, just walk by, you'd see a reflection, and then I cut to a wide angle where she just walk, and as um, as she would arrive, uh, she would just cast her spell, raise her head, and as she raised her head, uh, the camera would follow. But I realized, well, I can do that all with the same camera movement, and uh, what I had was that I had starlight on the set, and I had a reflection because the problem with uh, reflections with the characters is that. A lot of, of um, 2D productions, what they're going to do is that they're just going to flip the whole rig, well, the, the whole rig in 2D uh, horizontally, mm -hmm. actually vertically, and that's it. And the problem is that with the angle that I have, um, you basically have a hoof that would touch the ground and another that would float uh, compared to a reflection. So I had to build the rig in 3D space with two and boom since it uh, behaves in 3D space. And then use that, uh, instead of putting the leg a bit up, I would basically have the leg placed behind. And I mirror it within the 3D space to have the reflection that where the hooves would touch. And I was thinking, well, that's it. And the problem that I realized later is that I, um, since the hooves, they basically have to lift up and then go down, I would need to figure out a way to actually have the reflection match as well. So I had to go with that angle uh, in 3D space to that angle and then animate in 2D the hoof going up so it, it would line up and it was a really weird challenge and people enjoyed it uh, that way I actually have a, a reflection of a character and have her shadow too because it, uh, since it matches in 3D space I could also have a shadow 
uh, and one, at one point I realized that the scroll needed to reflect, and I was fighting forever with the, the scroll and was wondering why it wouldn't reflect until I realized I was not using the right um, uh, the right formula to basically flip it. Yes. So that was oh my god, it was a lot of fight, all for one or that's about thirty seconds long. And if I had it um, as multiple shots, it would be quicker. But you won't really feel the tension of the idea that you wonder, oh, what is she going to do? What is she going to do? Because you realize, oh, okay, maybe she's going to go with the time travel. Maybe she's going to go with something crazier. And then you see the roots, and you're thinking, well, maybe she's going to try something else. Maybe she's going to try uh, just, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Serena Romancy. And actually, I did find it pretty interesting. You'd see the three roots on the top. Yeah. And I'd be able to go from three roots to the actual three i uh, thought it was pretty clever as an idea so yeah mm. man that was that scene was so good like and then you had every single flashback scene to the series i'm like oh yeah there's that scene there's that scene oh dude this is so freaking awesome oh okay that one's pretty interesting because that was not pl part of the original plan the idea was that you that only have a starlight from the, the tree and she basically says well you know I was just going to undo what I did. And she goes back, like you have a camera go up and then go down and you see the tree is gone and then you see Starlight there. And then Twilight comes and she asks like, uh, what's going on? And Starlight says, you know, I was just thinking and she doesn't want to tell uh, Twilight what she did. But I realized some people may be a bit confused. Like, did she just time travel back to the future with all the changes she did? And like... Twilight doesn't really acknowledge it. I needed to get a way to show that Starlight undid what she did. And I was thinking, well, let's go back to the scenes I had before, like the one she, where she has the, um, the, where you have Twilight go with the tickets. And let's go with that scene, but just get rid of uh, Starlight of the scene. Just show she's gone now. Uh, get rid of her with the photo as well. And I was thinking, well, I got those scenes, but that's it. And I was thinking, well, let's go with a quick montage of a couple of scenes. And I realized later, oh, shoot, I need to make setups for those scenes. I uh, got some that are easier, like, for example, the one with Twilight with her costume. It's only from one angle, so I don't need to make a full rig of the restored bearded costume. I got a Luna rig from uh, the Fall of Sunset Shiver that I can reuse. Nice. Um, I can just change the lighting to a night lighting. Uh, I had the one with... Uh, the pirate sprites where i had to cut out manually uh all the bites that it would take out of the, the buildings uh, it was basically just done in 2d because of the time needed i had to figure out um i had the environment for um, castle mania which, where i re just reused um, the castle model they had from luna's determination and i realized well it's in the main hall uh at the entrance let's so it was a nice. Uh, I had uh, one scene that I did originally uh, cut from the script, but I still had the mo the models, the twinkling balloon. Uh, the idea was that um, there was a scene where you had Starlight being asked, like, "What do you? Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, when when you're gonna go and visit the um, the Wonderbolts? Mm -hmm. Like, Rainbow Dash gonna compete?" And uh, Starlight just says, "Well, you know." I'm kind of curious to see how a rarity is going to compete with those wings, and then everybody just laughs at her, just yeah. saying, "Oh, you silly!" Oh, <laughs> that you have a rarity just flying with her wings, yeah. and and uh, basically that shot was reused because I realized that I had the rig for that. Mm -hmm. I cut out the all the dialogue with that, but I realized, well, I that I have that set up, so let's take out Starlight, let's go with the twinkling balloon, let's put that pen. Let's go with it. I had the twinkling balloon, so I could also have the scene with uh, Discord when you have the main six chase after Rainbow Dash, yeah. which I thought was pretty interesting, and a lot of people kind of don't remember a lot because I wanted to show the highlights, but also the ones that we don't all remember, but we still feel, uh, you know, a lot of uh, sweet memory. Well, I would say it's not that we don't remember it, it's just that the top of the tap when you think about uh, the return of Army. So, you know, it's still some sweet memories. Um, I had, uh, of course, I had uh, the one with uh, a bridal gossip where I just yeah. took out Starlight. 
Uh, I had the explosion of the Golden Library that I wanted because this was part of st the story. Um, it was a really interesting thing because um, I needed to have in the background just uh, Tyrek for it. He goes, <laughs> and he just shoots yes. at it. And yes. yes, I remember that, that scene. It was so Yeah, funny. and I realized, well, I need to have him in the background, so just cut out a screenshot of him and just placed it behind since you wouldn't see him uh, very well. I just put the uh, the fireball. I know, like, Princess I Twilight, how... you have something that belongs to me! <laughs> I was worried, how do I blow up the gold download library? And I was looking at how they did in the show, and uh, it's very simple. You just have the fireball go it, and they just overlay uh, an explosion on top of it, and then you see it... Uh, you just see the remains in the next shot. So I was thinking, well, let's go with it. Let's go with uh, just lay layering uh, an explosion type of all of it. Yeah. And it just blew up. And I was thinking, well, it still needs a little something. So I applied in post. I was uh, uh, had to reduce some of the smoke effects for the teleportation from the false sunset shimmer, just changing the color to Twilight's magic. So you'd see her just teleport at the last minute. That was so good. And you, know, you could just basically just fade to white. Yep. Uh, and it was really interesting because uh, since I could apply all the explosions within this, that 3D scene instead of layering them on top, I could actually have them interact with the lighting with everything else. And I uh, just put a giant uh, point light on top that just cranked up the, the exposure, just made it really bright. I uh, added a little camera shake just to make it yeah. more uh, dramatic, and it worked great. So, that, that, yeah. that and of course, I put it in the trailer because you know it's about it. So true, true. Also, YouTube, if you see this, un, let him have his comments back. His video is great. This is not for kids. Animation is not just for kids. Oh, it's really frustrating because. The idea of the digging that animation just for kids is, um, well, for, for one, uh, you, you look at that and you're wondering, well, you know, you have lots of adults who want to do animation, and uh, I mean, they want to work in animation because they want to make animation, but also because they enjoy it. Otherwise, uh, you only have kids who do this, animation, and right. uh, child labor is not a really something you want to do, so... Yeah, but the thing with executives is that they seem to have, you know, a very shallow uh, idea of animation because they see animated shows for kids that make a lot of money because, mm -hmm. you know, they're successful. And yeah. they only see that and don't, don't really think about the idea that adults would enjoy it too because they don't look at uh, those successes for adults. And, of course, I can see also the idea that to make a show for kids so adults can also watch it. So exactly. it's basically a whole family show. Totally agree. But they don't really think about that as a family show. They see it as a kid's show that adults watch. So... Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. It's really frustrating because that's really limiting the scope you have with uh, storytelling with animation. This is... You know, this is a type of filmmaking. This is a, a way to tell stories that are pretty interesting, with meaning means that you... Uh, I was thinking, for example, Brad Bird was talking about that. It's not a genre. And he, he clearly said, if you call it a genre, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> I don't think you would actually do that. But um, the idea that you... Yeah. It's like, for example, if you look at a movie and you say, oh, it's a... A film genre, like it was shot on film, so it's a movie for uh, film enjoyers, and it's not the same as something that's shot in digital. Agreed. Or um, even the aspect ratio, which also affects the way the story is told. Like you're looking, for example, at a uh, movie made in 4x3, mm -hmm. and you're looking at it and thinking, oh, it's a genre. And you, I don't know, then you say, oh, well, you know, Citizen Kane and uh, the Z Zack Snyder's cut. Justice League, yeah, it's the same genre. Exactly, it's a movie. It's it's basically that you're looking at animation as a tool, like you have rigs of characters that move in in two D or three D space, yes. and you basically make them act as 
as you want. You can make them look as you'd like. Uh, you have lots of styles. For example, MLP has a very different style from... Yes, well, just the idea that you have, uh, it, it's very funny because the style of, of MLP is based on a lot of uh, the style that Cartoon Network was based on that was inspired by Anna Barbara. Exactly. That was inspired by UPA. And UPA, they, it basically, uh, it's basically a group of people who were tired of working with Disney because they didn't want to work with talking animals or princesses. So... That's like two of the things of MLP. I don't know how do you feel about that, thinking that uh, there is not a use for that, but that's uh, that's one of those things with the history like that. Man. It takes well turns like that, Man. and yeah, you, you look at that and yeah. you and you know that's very drastically different and. The idea that you'd limit scope like that, for example, uh, when I work on those animated projects, one of the reasoning why I, I go with uh, a mix of 2D and 3D is that I want to get the full potential of both. Uh, it like how, you know, how, uh, for example, Hollywood is already doing that. They will film with with live action actors and then yes. juxtapose it with 3D models for uh, the environments. And that's not just, for example, superhero movies. You have lots of serious movies that will actually use it to actually in, uh, just improve and increase the scope of a story to actually show something that's you know feels larger than life. Well, it's larger than life, but still feels realistic. Uh, in some cases, do you'd see uh, period pieces, or instead of just having very small sets with actors and period accurate costumes. You'd actually have those actors and small sets, and then it would extend them massively to really feel like you've lived there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's quite impressive. That's what they want to do, because that's how you build a world. It's about how you build a character. Yeah. You want people to be drawn into each style right. when it comes to animation, and all about worlds and creation. That's what's amazing. And with animation, you don't have to worry about keying. Like, you have the characters that act... You already have the alpha for background. You just have to make sure to match the lighting to actually have well framed shots. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to storyboard them to actually have the storytelling to actually make it, uh, you know, yeah. tell the story you have in mind. Also and a budget. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a funny thing with, uh, with uh, missing out. The budget was really small. Uh, I had to basically use my two computers uh, full-time for the renders because the uh, EV might be a, a yeah. game render. Well, it's a game render. It still takes forever to render those shots, so I had to get the, the two computers uh, constantly running to get it done. I had... Uh, we didn't have a lot of budget for characters, so I, we had out. to be clever. And you learn a lot when you look at uh, low-budget filmmakers. Uh, I was thinking of uh, Rebel without the crew. Um, a nice book about that uh, that also has a documentary about that where you really learn that kind of clever things you can actually do um, with filmmaking and those principles also apply to animation in a, lo in a lot of ways so it feels really good to see that um, just use what you got yeah oh man I think I might be eating dinner soon mm-hmm uh, why are you talking about food right now? Forget to eat. You haven't eaten anything yet? Not yet. I don't know what I'm going to eat tonight. And... <laughs> it's all part of general conversation. Yeah, well, I was thinking of poutine, <laughs> but uh, the thing is that I had one yesterday, and that the kind of food I eat when I'm sad or when I'm happy. And I don't want to... I don't want to get fat. Well, yeah, I gotta eat sure. I mean, some, I think I'm eating some kind of salad. I mean, fries, cheese, gravy, something uh, extra to add to it sometimes. Poutine? Yeah. I've, like, yeah, I've had pulled pork poutine before. Mm, I, actually, I had, no, I had one with ribs. Um, what? A couple of days ago. Uh, poo 
It's such a Canadian thing, right? Mm. You should know. <laughs> I should know. Well, we both do. We both live in the same country. <laughs> but we created it, so. Yes, you did. Um, yeah, I don't know. You're really proud of our culture, but only when it's convenient for you. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, born in Canada, lived in Canada, still in Canada. Hmm. But hey, we created some really cool shit, <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. one of them. Uh, it's actually pretty, pretty interesting how many uh, VFX studios are in Canada, and because when you think of Hollywood, right? you think of yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, part of it was Gen that we had made in Canada. I took a history of the MLP Minty. Gen two was made in Canada. Gen four was made in Canada. I don't know about Gen five where that's being made. Oh, actually, Gen five is partly done in Canada. The TV show was done in Canada with mm -hmm. uh, voice actors from Toronto. The movie was done in Europe by Boulder. The same with a bunch that of... did the 2017 movie. Uh, nope. Uh, 2017 movie was done by. Um... Yeah, well, I say Wallet Brain, but DHX. Yeah, DHX. Back when was, was yep. And then Lionsgate uh, sponsored that one. The same company that put out the Saw movies. I like Lionsgate. They have a lot of good movies. I like from them. Um, yeah. Boulder Media did a great job on that on that movie, though. Yeah. Um, the 2000 and don't kill me don't kill me 2021 that's when the yep. first gen 5 during the covid pandemic it was um really weird to to tell my mom Let, let's watch uh the mlp movie and that uh, first you thought i was talking about the uh the older one yeah but anyway, it was really weird to have our own cinema experience at home just getting ourselves some uh you know some popcorn just mm -hmm. i've watched yeah the movie i watched uh, make your mark part one and then i watched the part two that just came out all at you binge all the episodes at once netflix yeah yep. that's that's one of the things with netflix it they really like the idea of and i don't think it's the proper approach but they like dumping all the episodes at once also, I've been watching and they expect people to just watch all of them and it's a really bad idea for one reason if you're really excited for a uh, series and you want to think you're thinking well I just want to watch that series and nothing else and they're releasing all the episodes at once so I'm going to subscribe to Netflix uh, mm -hmm. going to watch all of it and then cancel luckily for me on Netflix there's a lot of shows I like watching so <laughs> but I mean that's what happened with Disney with uh, The Mandalorian like, uh, I just waited for uh, because they actually released uh, one episode at a time but I just waited for the one month where the last episode would release. I just done my song. They had to. They had to expect people to just do that. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I do miss a bit the um, the experience they have just waiting for it uh, for things to air. Trailers that would show. For an episode right before, and it would just get you excited. Oh no, Minty, you're starting to lag on my end. You lagged a couple of times. Okay, now you're now you're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. Anyways, I could hear it. the supper's almost dinner. <laughs> it's literally almost dinner time. It's, it's almost, almost dinner. Ooh, well, I mean, I we're in a free country, so we can have dinner whenever. <laughs> this once yeah i think we might have to cut it here because <laughs> if it's starting to go uh do you have any other questions um no i'm all out but anyway oh anyways everyone thank you for enjoying this interview i will link missing out in my description of this video below and i will link minty rich channel please go subscribe to him and i'll have that other video of me doing the reaction video to missing out coming out soon so until then, stay frosty, my friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.